640318. So we would see Jesus. Denham Springs, Louisiana, we see. Here the people are acquainted with what we are trying to do. Now, what we're trying to do, remember, is to see Jesus Christ so present that every believer's heart will be stimulated, his faith, that he'll reach up and get a hold of God and for what he has need of, for all that we have need of in this life's journey is in Christ. Just like a tree is out here, all that tree has need of, it's an apple tree. Did you ever think of that? When it's not one inch high, every apple that will ever be in the tree is in it right there. Ten hundred bushels, if there's that many, say five hundred bushels of apples come off of a tree. All five hundred bushels of apple was in it when it was planted. If it isn't where they come from, see, see, just plant it and then it has to draw in the water, draw it in from the earth, and it has to draw till it gets so more than its portion, then it pushes out limbs, pushes out leaves, pushes out blossoms, pushes out apples, see, pushes them out. Just don't bring them in, it pushes them out. So there I think Christ is the inexhaustible fountain of life. And when we are planted in him, all we do is drink from that fountain of life and push out everything that we have need of in this journey. All the things that we have need of is in him. And we are planted in him and we draw from him. And he is the inexhaustible fountain of life. Let us turn to our feet now, if you will, just a moment in reverence as we read God's word. For a little text tonight, being it's close to the Lenten season, or the Good Friday, I want to read a portion of St. John's Gospel, beginning at the 12th verse in the 12th chapter. On the next day, much people were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him, cried, Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, and as it was written, Fear not, daughters of Zion. Behold, the king cometh to thee, sitting on an ass colt. These things understood not his disciples at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered these things written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. And people therefore that was with him, when he had called Lazarus from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said unto among themselves, Perceive ye how he reveal nothing. Behold, the one is wild is gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida. Galilee desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and then again Andrew, and Philip tell Jesus. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us bow our heads while we pray. Now this solemn moment, with our heads bowed, after reading this word, is there any in here who would like to be remembered in this prayer and want God to do something for you during the time of this meeting? Or even this very evening, would you just let it be known as you raise your hand? He'll know what's beneath your hand. Our Heavenly Father, we are now approaching thy word. We approach with reverence and with prayer, with bowed heads and bowed hearts, for we know that thou art always true to this word. We pray now that you will set aside from the things and cares of life in this world, that we might serve thee with pure and clean hearts, washed in the blood of the Lamb. We ask you, Lord, is this the hour that there could break out a great revival here in this part of the country? If it is, Lord, we are here to serve you in any way that we can. And we just commit ourselves to you for that service. And may something take place, Lord, that will start the hearts of the people. And there, maybe that the meeting is just set for a few that's scattered out around here yet. That maybe it may be the last member of the body of Christ will be added right here in Louisiana. And then the doors will be closed. We don't know just what, Lord. We're just moving cautiously, watching every move. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will heal all the sick and afflicted. As I look laying here, a poor little afflicted child and people are laying around sick and needy. God, may they look away from the afflictions tonight and through this coming week. And may there not be a evil person among us at the closing of this meeting. Bless the ministers, Lord, and their fine cooperation and the things that they are doing to get together. 
and the people realize that this is the heart of the pastor to try to bring in everything and every gift and everything they can that's honored by God, that it might help their congregation to see and to believe and grow. Granted, Father, forgive us of our trespasses. Grant every request beneath those hands tonight. Lord, mine up. Thou knowest my heart. It's prayer for the people. May Jesus be known among us, Father. Give us a great outpouring of his blessings. And when we leave here tonight, may we be able to say, like those who came from Emmaus that day after the resurrection, as we're entering these holiday seasons, did not our hearts burn within us, they said, as he talked to us along the way. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen, and may be seated. Not to preach or to take much time, but just to set in order, just a little few thoughts here now before we call the prayer line. In about 25 minutes, I suppose, I'll call the prayer line to pray for the sick. And now each night, Mr. Borders and them will be trying to explain to you how and how to hold a healing and so forth. And remember, we're not here trying just to represent divine healing. We're here to represent in Jesus Christ, and in him is healing. And every attribute of God is in him. And we, he has purchased our salvation, our healing, all we have. And healing is a minor, and you could have a major on a minor. We know that. So we are, but we are trying. Jesus used about 86% of his ministry was upon divine healing, that he may attract the attention of the people, then explain what his purpose was there. And that's the same thing we are trying to continue his ministry in the best way that we know how, believing that he still remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, we know that in the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Therefore, God and his word is the same self, same thing. It's God in print form. You're no more than your word. God is no more than his word. So this great feast that we're approaching here now, in this season, this Lenten, as they call it, and approaching Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday, a week to Easter Sunday, I believe. So we're approaching this. I thought I'd read the scripture that these hungry-hearted Greeks come up to worship at the feast of the Passover, and they little know that that was the Passover lamb Christ was to be. But their hearts were hungry. They wanted to see him. They had heard so much about him and know that great things they had heard that he had did. And so no doubt coming to that feast, they must have read much in the scripture of what he was and his nature and what he would do when he come. So they wanted to see they come to his disciples and they were given the privilege to see him by the goodwill and the ministry of his disciples were brought into his presence by his servants. And now if Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever, and I'm sure that here at in Baton Rouge that we are just as hungry to see Jesus as they were to see him then. I, every man that's in his right mind and hears about the Lord Jesus, he longs to see him. Oh, when I first heard of him, when I was a boy, I just couldn't hardly stand it. I thought, if he is God, he always was God. He always will be God. So trying to put it off in some great time in the past or some great time that's coming on, that's just the nature of man. Man is always praising God for what he did, looking forward for what he's going to do and ignoring what he's doing. That's just the nature of man. It's always been that way and it still remains that way tonight. But now these Greeks wanted to see him, and we want to see him. Well, now if he's risen from the dead, and not he's not dead, he is alive. And if he is alive, as the scripture claims he is, then why can't we see him? We have a right to ask to remember, he said, A little while and the world seeth me no more, yet ye shall see me. For I will be with you even in you to the end of the world. The world won't see me, but ye shall see me. And now, if he is the same as he should end forever, then why could we not see him? Now, if I would go to different ideas that you have had and remember that God never does anything outside of what he has promised to do, see, he always makes the promise, then he comes to fulfill it. God at the beginning, knowing the end from the beginning, because he was infinite, we all know that he is omnipresent, omnipotent, and infinite. Now, if he is infinite, then he knows all things, and now, and omniscient. So notice then, he lotted his scriptures down through the ages to come. And then when this age rolls around, why? We always try to have things figured out the way we think is right. 
But usually, if God has made a promise for that age, his custom way of doing anything and never changes doing it, remember, God never changes, never changes his ways because that's a reason we can definitely place our faith in what God said to be the truth. The Bible, now you've got to place God somewhere. Now, if God was going to judge the world, and he is, if we would say, if I might say to the French Catholic, what do you think he'll judge it by? The French Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic believes he'll judge it by that church. The Orthodox, Greek Orthodox Catholic believe he'll judge it by that. The Methodists would say, our church, the Baptist, our church, the Pentecostal say, it would be so confusing to a person who wouldn't know what to do. But he said he would judge the world by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is the word. So he'll judge the world by the word. Now, the Bible is the entire revelation of Jesus Christ. This is a revelation. Nothing is to be added to it or taken from it. The same will be taken apart from the book of life. If we add or take from it, that is the word of God, and we believe it. Now, each generation, when the church usually gets it so mixed up and everything, till... When the time comes for the world to be fulfilled, they're looking back to some other generation way back, what happened way back some other day, and they miss seeing what's happened in that day. Now to you Catholic people, how you missed those sins? How about John of Arc, a French? I may just raise that, because a French territory, remember, the priest burned her to a stick as a witch. She was a witch because that the girl was spiritual, she saw visions and so forth. And you burnt her for a witch. Then after a while, when you see your mistake, you dug up the bodies of these priests and throw them in the river for penance. But you see, it already passed. And that's the way it always is. It passes us and we don't see it. Even to his disciples, Jesus said, one time talking to them, they said, Why did the scribes say that Elias must first come? He said, He has already come and you didn't know him. And they understood it was John the Baptist. Even those disciples, that voice in the wilderness and Malachi 3 being fulfilled, why? It passed right by them and they never even understood it at all, seeing. And it's possible that we could let it pass right over us and fail to see it. God's way is always. Now, if it would come in a whole system or some certain organization like Protestant, Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostals, or some of the denominations would produce it and they would believe it, well then, the others would have nothing to do with it. So God never does deal in times like this with any organization. He never did. He always deals with an individual, one person, you. Just that one person. It's you, between you and God. Not between your organization and God, between you as an individual. So God always does it that way, always has. But now the Bible said he does nothing unless he reveals it to his prophets. He servants the prophets and always... A lot like in Elijah's time and Moses' time and all those different times, he would reveal it. Now, it had been written in the scripture that God was going to give them a super sign, a great sign, an everlasting sign. A virgin was going to conceive and then there was going to be one born a child. We know him as being the Messiah. All the scriptures all the way from Genesis up had linked up to the coming of the Messiah. The prophets were part of the word. Jesus said they were called gods. And they were, as long as the word of God was brought to them. He said, how can you condemn me when I say I'm the son of God? And you, those is written in your law, those who the word of the Lord come to, you call them gods, saying that it wasn't the prophets, it was the word of God. And it's the same thing now. And it was Jesus' same thing. The word of God made manifest. And that is always the light of the hour. Now, if we looked around tonight and we'd go back to some of these great churches all the way down through the age and say, this is it, this is it. If you don't watch, we'll be walking in a glare instead of a light. We're looking at something that passed, years passed looking back. Any man who drives the road looking through the rear view mirror will wreck up. That's right, that's right. You take... Like some of our sisters trying, 50 years old, trying to look 16, see, you're looking back. Look forward. Look where you're going to. Look where you're going, not what you come from. Paul said, forgetting those things that are in the past, I press towards the mark of the high calling Christ. You must always look where you're going, not where you've been. If you watch the rearview mirror, you will soon wreck up. That's been the trouble. That's the reason that Luther wrecked up. When Wesley's light come on, that's the reason that Wesley wrecked up when the Pentecostals come on. And if you don't watch, the Pentecostals is going to wreck up too. 
if they just don't keep on your toes to what you see you're always looking back referring to what somebody else did back there when we are when we are commanded to look forward keep going on their prophecy happened in their days this happens in this day and the next happens in the next day it's allotted out to the end time and there's things that are supposed to be going on now according to the scripture the holy spirit on earth poured out upon the people now when jesus came, those scribes and so forth ought to have recognized him but they didn't because they were so set in the traditions pharisees sadducees herodians what more they was in that tradition so steeped until the very prophecy of christ himself that what he was supposed to be they failed to see it he said to them said search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they that testify of me they said we are moses disciples he said if he was moses disciples you would have known me for moses root of me the lord your god shall raise up a prophet like unto me they claimed to be but they wasn't because that they were so stepped in tradition now that's how they missed seeing him in that day that they lived in now that could repeat you know it always has and it could repeat again now let's just go back for a few minutes and the only way that we could find out what he is now today if we take the honorary person what christ ought to be we some of them picture him as a historical great something some bring him down to just an ordinary man and some brings him to a philosopher or prophets or something another like that a good man a teacher but he whatever he was he still is according to the scripture see now if we went down to town to find him and go looking around to see if now remember his promises that he'd be with us and if we went to find a certain man at we'd say i'd say maybe be six foot tall and you'd say no it will be seven and a half another would say no he's only four foot he was a little fellow see we'd all be all mixed up well they'd say maybe he'd have nail scars in his hand just an hypocrite could have nail scars in his hands and thorn prints and after all jesus is sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high but how would we ever know who he was they didn't know him then because of his dress because he walked right among men even after his resurrection and them he would walk with and they still didn't know him see it wasn't his dress he just dressed like anybody else it wasn't his dress it wasn't his manner it wasn't his organization it wasn't his fellowship card that he packed because he had none frankly he disagreed with it so it wasn't that they said we don't know from whence he come and the blind man said that's a strange thing you are leader of today and he has opened my eyes and yet you don't even know where he come from he had some good theology of his own see he said you don't know what this man has done the things he has done and yet you're supposed to be the leaders of the day now but the sad part with them their eyes were blinded it was supposed to be that way did you know the church is supposed to be in the last day too heady high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of god having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof from that's the same prophecy the same thing it certainly is in the Laodicea church jesus was on the outside of the church trying to get back in knocking at the door the only age was ever put out of our church is in the Laodicea age that we are now living so we see we're right back again where we started now the only true way to find out what he was or what he is is to find out what he was now cause he'd be the same now let's just go back and pull up a few things that he did we all know his virgin birth and we'll not start with that but i read out of saint john let's go back to saint john the first chapter and just find out what he was and then we can understand what he is now whatever he was then he's the same thing now all right now we find out here in the beginning he was a word in the beginning was a word then he is still the word seeing uh-huh in the beginning was a word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us all right then that's what he was then he was the vindicated promise of god for that age that made him the word is that right well he'd be the same thing today the word against him and he told them to look at that 
That's what he was. He was the word. The word was made flesh. That's what he was. Now, when he became the word and God came down in the form of the Holy Spirit, in a form of a dove, and went upon him and said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased to dwell in. Then we find out his ministry started out prayers for the sick, healing. Everybody liked him. He was fine, known as a fine fellow. And then when in his first ministry, what identified him? Remember, the Jews always believed in divine healing. They had a pool at the gate here of Bethsaida. Bethsaida at the gate, a beautiful gate. The people laid there, multitudes of impotent people that were lame, halt, blind, and went into the waters for healing. God has always made a way for healing. So his healing wasn't exactly what attracted the attention to him. There was something more that attracted his attention. Now we find out that if what he was supposed to be, Moses had said what he would be, and all the prophets had spoke of him, now he has got to be identified by that. Now here is what he is, the word. Now Hebrews, the fourth chapter says that the word of God is more powerful than a two-edged sword. It is cuts to the marrow of the bone and is a designer of the thoughts in the heart. And that's what the word is. Now, see, when the word come to the prophets, they were identified by the prophecy. God said, if there be one among you who is spiritual prophet, I, the Lord, will speak to him in visions and to and show him dreams and so forth. In other words, interpret dreams like Joseph and them did. And that will be his credentials. And then that was the credentials that he had. The inspired word by revelation. See, the word that he was to be fulfilled, his prophecy identified him as a prophet. And the word comes for prophet. So when Jesus came on the scene, the Bible said he was to be a prophet. Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. And Israel always believed the prophets because that was God identifying himself in human beings always. Any Bible scholar knows that. And that's the way he identified himself was in his prophets. They were just ordinary men, of course. They were born for that purpose. And we know there is local gifts of nine gifts in the church, but there's three offices of the church. And that God that's predestinated or foreordained, God has set in the church apostles then prophets and teachers, pastors, evangelists, and so forth. And that's God's gifts set into the church. Then there is nine spiritual gifts that operate in the local body and are believers, and they must be checked by two or three judges before they are to be given to the church, because sometimes they could be wrong. But notice these prophets, as they were born, like and I believe in Jeremiah here, God said before he was even conceived in your mother's womb, I ordained you a prophet over the nations, you see? Moses was born a prophet, and in the Baptist, 712 years before he was born, he was a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Isaiah the prophet speaking of him, see, it's not. These gifts are born gifts, God placing them in the church. And now, and during the first advent of our Lord, there had not been a prophet on the earth for 400 years. Malachi was the last prophet, and he spoke of the coming of John. In the third chapter of Matthew, which would be Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet spoke of him, and then also, then Malachi spoke, and Elijah said would appear on the scene a second foreign in Christ. I send my messenger before my face to prepare the way, as he said in Matthew 11, identifying John. And the strange thing now, when Jesus began to speak, and had been identifying himself, let's watch how he did that now. If he isn't scriptural in what he did, then he wasn't Messiah. He has to come according to the scripture. Now, there had been a man by the name of Andrew had been attending John's revival that John said he was coming. He is John was sure of his coming. He said he's standing right among you now because he knew that he was to announce that Messiah. Now, he never went off to a seminary to learn what Messiah would be. He went into the wilderness and was out there by himself and come forth because he was, had not been man trained. He had to be trained by God because now his father was a priest and it was customary that the son followed the father's business and his schooling and so forth. But John's business was too great, too important. 
Well, a lot of them people, he said, now, you know brother so-and-so here, he missed the qualifications. But John went out in the wilderness and till he was with God, till he was definitely knew what the sign of the Messiah would be. When he came, he said, I knew him not. But he that said, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining, he is the one is going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire, saying, He knew and was definitely sure that that was him. Now Andrew had been trying to get his brother Simon. They were fishermen, and they were trying to get his brother to come to the meeting. Now, I read a story some time ago about their life. They were great believers in the order of the Pharisees. And he had his father's name, father's name Jonas. And he was a great fisherman too. And many times they'd have to trust God for what they was got to eat, their fish to pay off their debts and get food. And I reading one day where the old father took Simon and sat him down and him and Andrew and he said, Boys, I always believed that I would live to see the coming Messiah that we have looked forward to all these years. And now, sons, before the Messiah comes, perhaps I'll be gone because I'm old. But I don't want you boys to be deceived. Now, there will be all kinds of things raised up before he comes. It always has to be that way, you know, to kind of knock off the real thing when it gets there. You see, Satan is always out there. Just like before Jesus came, they said there was other Jesus is raised up and took groups out into the wilderness and perished and so forth. But he said, sons, remember this Messiah will be scripturally identified. Oh, how we ought to teach people today, see, the Messiah will be identified by the scripture. Because Moses said, the Lord our God shall raise up a prophet like unto him, and Moses is our leader. And we are looking. Now, it's been hundreds of years. We have had no prophet, but Moses said that one was coming. And no doubt that this link here, without a prophet, has to identify that when it does come, he will meet the qualifications of the prophet. We all know the scripture. Now, we find that later that Jesus had never showed any sign yet. One day Simon came up into his presence, just a little skeptic perhaps of Andrew's testimony, because he had heard all this about this wild man happen, drowning people down in the river and with baptisms and so forth. And he couldn't go for that because there had been all kinds of stuff passed through Palestine at that time. But one day Simon came into the presence of the Lord Jesus. Now, let's watch what he was yesterday to that elected seed, that Simon that was ordained to take his place, that seed, that like in the beginning God was not even God. He was a great eternal and in there was attributes. Attributes was his thoughts. And then he became a word like this. And a word expressed, well, a thought expressed is a word. A word expressed is a thought. And then remember, if you ever was in God thinking, you'll always be there. If you've got eternal life, you are the expression or the attribute of his thought for this age. If not, you, there's only one eternal life. And it always existed. And you, in his mind, existed before there's a world. That's the reason he said he chose you before the foundation of the world. It isn't what we think, what somebody else thinks. It's what God eternal, you always was seen in his thinking. It was in him to be man. That's the reason Christ was not ex the expressed image thing. Now, he was to be father. He was to be son. He was to be savior. He was to be healer. There was nothing, there wasn't even an angel or nothing. Then he created angels and he became God. He was worshipped. Then these are the manifestations of his thinking. There's nothing wrong. Everything is going to turn out all right. Don't be scared. God's big timepiece is sticking right along. It'll be here. It'll have a charge without a spot or wrinkle. It was in his thinking. The thing of it is, am I in there? Are you in there? And here he was, the eternal thought of God expressed into sonship. Oh my, there was God Emmanuel. Then notice, then he was the word. Now here, I'm deafening you. I don't mean to scream at you. Sometimes you speak in big outdoors and place. And I don't mean to get too loud. Now, let the ever who is controlling it kind of cut it for me, if they will, if it gets too loud. Now notice, in this 
when Jesus came, here comes Simon up, walking up before him. And as soon as Jesus laid his eyes upon him, he said, Your name is Simon, and you are the son of Jonas. Oh, did that set that fisherman's heart on fire? He couldn't even write his own name. He had no education. But he knew that was a word because it designed the thoughts that was in his heart. There was Messiah. And though the Bible said he was both ignorant and unlearned, but he became the head of the church at Jerusalem. He fell down at his feet. He knew that that was. Not only did he know who he was, he knew that godly old father of his that has gone on. See, that showed that he was a word. The word designs the thoughts that's in their hearts. That's exactly what Jesus looked upon them and perceived their thoughts. See, and that the Bible said that the word of God is the designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That made him the word. Then that master prophet, that great prophet, more than a prophet, he, all the prophets was, plus the rest of God, see, he was Emmanuel. God represented in fullness, in the Christ, in the Son, Christ Jesus. Now we find God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Now, if you notice, then Peter was convinced that that godly old father of his had taught him. And here was a scriptural evidence that that was a Messiah. That was him yesterday. It's him today. How would he identify himself anymore? Now, his, uh, he didn't identify himself as some great doctor, PhD, LLC. He didn't identify himself as some great priest. The word of God identified him. The word speaking through him identified him, see? That's how they know what, who he was. Now, there was one standing there by the name of Philip, and Philip had been having Bible studies, scriptures on the scrolls with a fellow named Nathaniel. And when he seen this happen, it just so lit his heart up till he couldn't stand it no more. He knew the thing was there. He was just an ordinary man, but they knew that that was Messiah. So he ran around the hill. It was about 15 miles. If you measure where he was preaching, must have went one day and come back the next. And he went to find this fellow, had been having study with him in scripture, a very staunch, honest man. You have him around here, a man who has put their whole life in studying the word. So he had studied the word and Philip went to find him and perhaps knocked on the door and Nathaniel's wife said, why? He just strolled out to the olive orchard there. He raised olives. So he went and ran back to see him and he found him on his knees under one of the trees praying. Now Christian gentleman always gives short courtesy, so he waited till he got through praying. He said, come see who we have found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And then this staunch fine Hebrew named Nathaniel said, now wait a minute, Philip, have you gone off on the deep side? How could there, where did you see? What did you say this man's name was? Jesus of Nazareth, he said, now. Could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? And I think Philip gave him the best answer that any man could give another one. He said, come and see. Don't stay home and criticize. Come find out. Search the scriptures. Come and see. Well, perhaps along the road, he began to tell him, said, now, you know, we know from the scripture that this Messiah is going to be a prophet because Moses said he was and this man, you remember the old fisherman that couldn't sign his name to the receipt when he bought the fish, yes well, he told him who he was oh, imagine Philip saying now wait a minute oh, Nathaniel, I got to see that first when he finally got to where he was he came up with Philip Philip brought him up just like somebody brought you come up into his presence to the meeting where Jesus was preaching and he looked upon him he was just an ordinary man dressed like any other man he didn't look any different and he pulled no punches he was just a plain man and he talked sometimes in riddles to them that they couldn't understand it even his disciples that didn't disturb their faith see they believed him notice one time a great multitude had gathered around him, thousands. He was a great fellow. Oh, this prophet of Galilee, great fellow. He went to every church. Everybody wanted him. But one day he began to preach doctrine to them. And then that changed the thing a little bit, you see. He wasn't so popular from then on, you see. 
but the sign was accompanying the voice. Now we find out that when Philip came up to where he was, and him and Nathaniel, Jesus turned and looked upon Nathaniel and said, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no girl. Now you see, maybe the way he dressed, the old dressed alike, seeing, and an Israelite in whom there is no girl. Now that almost shocked him so bad he didn't know what to do. He said, Rabbi, when did you ever know me? Why? You've never seen me. This is our first time we've ever met. And they tell me you've been living down at Bethany. And how did you ever know me? Well, he thought, when the Messiah come, that God will take some kind of a leaven, and pull it down, and the corridors of heaven would drop down as a big denominational steps out there and say, Caiaphas, I'm sending down the Messiah to you now. He'll say, I've arrived. And the angels would come see this is him. See, that's the reason he does it. Then it goes right over the people's head that sleep, and they never know what they can play, see. Notice, there he was, he was standing there. He said, when did you know me, Rabbi? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. Oh, my, what eyes. He sees you now. He knows you now. He's just the same yesterday, today, and forever. What eyes, 15 miles, the day before, around the mountains. I saw you when you were under the tree. What did he do? He ran up and fell down and said, Thou art Rabbi, thou art the King of Israel. Thou art the Son of God. He believed it. Why? He was thoroughly identified that he was a word because he could design the thoughts that was in the heart. Yeah, There he was standing there now. There was those standing by who didn't believe that. No, many of them didn't believe it. There was some of the priests and things standing by. And they said, this man is Beelzebub. They, the thing was done, the scripture was identified. And then the clergy of that day had to give an answer to their congregation. And they couldn't answer it no other way. But just either say he is or he isn't. So they said, and this man does this through Beelzebub. In other words, he's a fortune teller, an evil spirit. Anybody knows that a fortune teller is a devil. So he said, this man does this evil through Beelzebub. And Jesus said, no, I'll forgive you for that. The sacrifice had never been made. The atonement was immediate. But he said, when the Holy Ghost is come to do it, one word against it will never be forgiven. In this world, not the world to come. So you see where it throws us today? Now this was quite a thing, and but Philip and Nathaniel believed with all their heart. Now that was the way Jesus identified himself yesterday as being Messiah. Now we all know, just a few minutes now, we all know that there is only three races of people in the world, and that's Noah's sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, see? And that's Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. Now we as Gentiles, we were heathens, Romans, and whatever more in them days. The Anglo-Saxon, and we worshipped idols, but the Jews was looking for a Messiah, and the Samaritans was looking for a Messiah. Now Jesus said, when he was on his road down to Jericho, right down below the hill from Jerusalem, I have need to go by Samaria. So he went up there at Samaria, and he sat down at the gate at the well. There's, is still just like it was then. They haven't changed a bit. There is the old panoramic like this here, and the vines grew in rock, wall and he just sat down and he sent his disciples into the little city called Sychar to get some victuals food and while they were gone a woman of ill fame maybe as I said the young lady might have turned on the street from not driven delinquent maybe parent delinquent they let her out in the street and maybe a fine looking young woman and she had did evil and she come up there to get her water because she couldn't come with the virgins. They wouldn't, nice honorable woman, they wouldn't do it. They would get theirs first, then the rest of them prostitutes, and things come up in the day virgins get there. Well, have watched them put that big five gallon cattle on top of their head, that big crock, and one on each shoulder, and walk along talking as women can, and never spill a drop of it. I don't know how they do it but they sure do it. But they threw there, and then she came to get her water for the day. The rest of them was gone. Must have been around noon. And she took the handles and put it for a window to let it down to get the thing. It's just like a kind of a crock. And it's, and it's got a handle around it. 
and they put those hooks around those handles and being heavy when it gets down it turns over and then they windle the water up just like sometimes we've done it here in these countries and so forth but they have a little trough we let down now we find she started to let this picture down into the well and she heard as somebody said woman bring me a drink and she looked around she saw a middle-aged man sitting there he must have looked a little older than what he was because in saint john 6 here we find out that they at the feast they were saying he said what he was and they said well you see you see abraham and you are a man not over 50 years old see not over see he must have looked 50 when he was only 30 said you're not over 50 years old and see you have seen abraham he said before abraham was i am seeing and then we find out that he must have looked a little aged as sitting over against the side of the wall we don't know just what he looked like i wouldn't know a psychiatrist or psychology <laughs> paints us a picture but hoffman one and salman and whoever more but that's just what they think about it see we don't know just what he looked like and there he was sitting there and then he said this and now he turned the woman to him quickly and let him know this is a segregation he said now just a minute said now you are jew and i'm a woman of samaria and we have no dealings with each other and said he said but if you knew who you were talking to you'd ask me for a drink i bring give you water you don't come to draw in the conversation what he was doing he was trying to contact her spirit now see to see what was in her now the father had sent him up there just the same as i believe the father sent me here saying but what i don't know saying but there he was and was talking to her and she said oh you say worship of jerusalem our father worshiped in this mountain and about the well and so forth he said the time is coming and now is and god seeks those who worship in spirit and truth the conversation went on till he found what her trouble was how many in my congregation tonight knows what her trouble was sure she had too many husbands so he said he said go get your husband and come here and she said i don't have any husband he said you said the truth you've had five and the one you're living with is not yours now watch look at those trained priests failing to see that what manifested when he did that before those priests they said his bells above look at this woman in her state what condition she was in a woman of ill fame had six husbands and here she was out there at the well and that woman in that estate look Quickly she said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We haven't had a prophet for hundreds of years. I perceive that you are a prophet. We are looking for Messiah. And when this Messiah comes, this is his mark. He is going to do this when he comes. Amen. Oh my, there you are. That woman in her condition knowed more about the word of God than half the preachers in the country does. That's right. That's right. She said, I know when the Messiah cometh, that's called Christ. When he comes, and that's what he's going to do. If that was him yesterday, and that's him today, see? And that's how he identified himself, both to the Jew and to the Samaritan, see? Notice that was him yesterday. He said, I know when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things, but who are you? He said, I am he that speaks to you. Into the city she went, leaving that water pot, said, Come, see a man who told me the things I've done. Isn't that the very Messiah? that was his identification to his jews and to the samaritan but not to the gentile not one time to a gentile but in luke the 17th chapter he said in the last days as it was in the days of sodom when the son of man was being revealed as it was like in the days of sodom now in the days of sodom now and we're closing notice there was always watch there's always three classes of people everywhere one of them is believer make believer and unbeliever they're everywhere watch Watch Jesus identifying Lot's time with his coming. Now watch. As it was in the days of Lot. Now what kind? Now he referred then. He was reading the same book of Genesis that we read. Jesus was in the days of Noah. And then as the days of Lot. Look back and see what they were doing in the days of Noah. 
and in the days of Lot, because it's the same scripture. Notice, we notice, in the days of Lot, there was a man that had been called out from among the people, and he had a group with him which represents a church, spiritual, and that church, spiritual, was Abraham's group. Then he had one in here, his nephew, that left him by the name of Lot, and went down and lived in Sodom. And the sins of Sodom vexed his soul. Only his wife couldn't permit him to do anything about it. She belonged to all the clubs and things. And there is just so many lots sits around these days and know that the thing is wrong. But the woman church they belong to, if they say anything about it, will take away his card. So that's a meal ticket. So then, find out what that is. Now wait. Abraham was looking for a promised son, that's right, a spiritual promised son. Now, and Lot was done, done for God about the son. He was just down living with his wife and his kids, and all down in Sodom. He had become a mayor of the city, and he was a great fellow. His wife belonged to all the clubs. They were getting along pretty good. And then notice that, setting now, now, just give me a minute or two longer. Your attention closely, watch the setting. The world has never set in that position since like it is now that perfect setting look here they call out a group now there were three angels come to abraham and two of them went down in sodom and one of them stayed with abraham and the one that stayed with abraham them two went down in sodom and preached repentance and get out of here get out of it he said but the one that stayed with abraham watch how he identified himself to abraham now remember abraham was abram a day or two before that, and Sarah was not Sarah. Now, he is A B R A H A M, A B R A H A M, seven letters, and she is S A R R A H, five. Grace, see, not S A R R A, but S A R A H, see Sarah. And watch this one sitting here now, eating the calf, drinking milk from the cow, and the butter, and eating corn cakes, sitting they are eating talking to abraham and he said abraham how did he know his name was abraham the word he was a word knowed abraham where is your wife sarah women in then days didn't act like they do now you know how to be in the husband's business and everything you know they stayed away seeing so they so she was in he said she's not trying to behind you and he said i now that's a personal pronoun now i i want to visit you according to the promise it was made 25 years before that she is 90 and he's 100 there he is his bald head shining his white whiskers hanging down her a little old grandma with a little cane in her hand back there in the back a little shawl over her shoulder i'm going to visit you and you're going to have the promised child watch and sarah laughed at it she said how could these things be I am old and my lord, her husband, is old too. You see what I mean? Family relation hadn't been for years and years and years. Why? She was 90 years old and was 100. Her womb was dead. His life stream was dried up and gone. There is no more desire, said me, like a young woman, have pleasure with my husband. He mold too, why she laughed. And the angel or the messenger, the man with his back turned to the tent, said, why did Sarah say that? See? What was it? Now watch. And then after the sacrifice was made, he vanished. Now remember, Abraham called that man Elohim. How many readers know that? You know him. That's right, Elohim. That's Almighty God in the form of a man. He was a word because he could design the thoughts. See, God in flesh. What does it testify? That in the last days, Jesus said just before, when the Son of Man is being revealed to his promised church, the church that's not down yon in Babylon, we got a Babylon church, you know that. The denominations, they're in Babylon. But we got a Billy Graham and an Oral Roberts, and them out there banging away at them too. And remember, any of you historians, there has never been a man in all the history of the church ages that has ever went out to Babylon, out there preaching, and his name ending with H-A-M till now. Billy, G-R-A-H-A-M, which is six, not seven, they are what? The messenger out yonder, preaching repentance and blinding their eyes by the gospel. And there was one to the called out elected church that was showing the sign that God was in flesh. 
Jesus was God in flesh. And if Jesus is in you tonight, is still God manifests himself in the last days, the Son of Man revealing himself in his church, the human flesh making himself known. You get it? See? God down here in his church making himself again the word. The Son of Man being revealed in the last days, as it was in the days of Sodom. Now remember, if God gave the Jews and the Samaritans that sign, that he was the word, the prophets that Moses spoke of, the Gentiles, after they had a thousand years to look for him, would have had two thousand years to look for him. He has to identify himself in the same way to us as he did to them, or he did wrong when he identified himself that time. God has got to act the same time, same way every time, or he acted wrong the first time. If he saved a man upon the basis of his faith, look, God never changes friends. When man was lost in the Garden of Eden, he was seeking for mercy. God made a decision how he would save man, and he saved him by the shed blood of an innocent one. Is that right? He has never changed it. We have built cities, towers, we have built denominational educational systems, and it still remains the same. We have got denominations and all kinds of things, but he only saves by the blood. He can't change it. God ever remains true to his system, his word. Whatever he did the first time, he has to do it again or he acted wrong the first time. Therefore, whatever this word of God promises, that's what is going to be. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. He's got to do the same. He's got to act the same. He's got to be the same. As he promised in the last days, he would be in his church. And remember, that was the last sign that the church got before the promised son came. Abraham had seen many signs and wonders. But that was the last one, last visitation before the promised son come. Is that right? Find out. Now, church, watch. As it was in that day, we have all kinds of signs, healing, miracles, speaking in tongues, prophecies. But remember, we've got to have a last sign just before. Remember, that was a gentle world that was burnt up. That's what it's going to be this time, just before the fire. The Son of Man will reveal himself. Ah, oh, here. A little while the world won't see me no more, but yet ye shall see me at the consummation. I'll be with you even in you, the end of the world. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Sars, we would see Jesus. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we are told in the scriptures that God raised him up on the third day. We are told in St. John, the 14th chapter, the 12th verse, Jesus said, he that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. Even more than this shall he do, for I go unto my Father. Lord Jesus, the hours are growing dark and dim. The church is lost out in the wilderness, wandering around from the people going from one organization to another, from one generation to another. Come in your promised word. Come, Lord Jesus, and come into us tonight. Come into every heart that's here. Come into my heart and my life. And may you identify yourself with our faith in you tonight, that you was, have raised up from the dead, in the same yesterday, today, and forever. May we see you, Lord, in this little group of poor people, as we assembled here. We are out here because we are sick in life. What a great thing to know that the resurrection and life is among us. Identifying himself, not with some mystic something, but according to the promised word, as it was in the days of Noah and as the days of Lot. When the Son of Man is being revealed, <coughs> I pray, Father, I shall grant you tonight that the people here that seek and needy, and those who are sick in soul, those who are just joined the church and knows nothing about receiving the Holy Spirit, and watch it punctuate every word with an Amen. That's in the Bible. The Bible is a mysterious book to them. They can't understand it. May they receive the interpreter of the word tonight that needs no one to interpret it but him, making it real to their life. Granted, Father, we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. I may be in 10 minutes off tonight for being long, forgive me. But we're just going to call a few of the prayer cards, let them pray for them. Now I'm going to ask you one thing now. Don't get up and move around you, will you? Just sit still, lest you just something like a little child or something you have to take it but if you'll just sit still just for a few minutes just 
and let's see if he will come. If he will come and identify himself tonight, says, we would see Jesus. And you can see his life living, right, doing exactly what he did then. For he'd have to do the same thing. He said, I am the hot vine, ye are the hot branches. Well now, how does the what kind of a life is in the vine will have to be in the branch? Now look, see, in here today, you people, don't you all raise fruit down here, citrus fruit and things? Someone says plums, what? Plums? All right, you raise. Look here. If your vine puts forth and brings a branch off of that vine, and whatever fruit that's on that vine, if that vine puts forth another branch, it will be the same thing. I was standing with my friend a couple years ago out in Arizona, Mr. Sharit, and he had a citrus tree there. I think it had nine different fruits on it. And it had lemon, grapefruit, tangerine, tangelo, orange. I said, what kind of a tree is that? I said, it's an orange tree. Well, I said, well, how did them get in there? He said, I grafted them. Oh, I said, I see, Brother Sharit. I said, I think Brother Sharit was with me the last time I was here. And so I said, well, Brother Sharit, next year there'll be all be oranges and won't be, oh, no, no, no. Uh -huh. He said the grapefruit will put forth a grapefruit. The lemon will put forth a lemon. Well, I said, how is that? He said it was all citrus. Oh, I got it then. I said, that's it. I said, thank you, Lord. See, we graft organizations into this vine. It will live by the vine, but it bears that kind of a fruit that it is. But if that orange tree ever puts forth another limb, it will bring oranges. And if that life come from Jesus Christ and they wrote a book of Acts behind the first church, if she puts forth another one, they will write another book of Acts behind it with the same thing because it's got to be the same. Don't have time to get them all. So let's just quickly now, while we just got a few minutes, start from M1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Raise up your hands. You that got... Who has got M1? Is it here? Prayer card M1. Are you sure? Oh, M1. You got prayer card number one. Who had it? The lady there with number one. Come right over here. Is that? Is this where you bring them? Number one. Come over here, lady. Number two. Who has prayer card number two? Right here. All right. Come right over here, sir. Three. Raise up your hand. Now watch these people on the stretchers when the cards are called. You pack them up here because I don't think either one of them can walk. And the gentleman there in a wheelchair, all right. One, two, three. Prayer card three, all right. Three, four. Four, prayer card four. Let look at your card now. Right quick, five. Right there, get up. Go right here, six. Sir, six, prayer card six, six, seven. Is this, these people speak French or seven, all right? Eight. Eight, look, it might be somebody there for something. Eight, all right, all right. Now you watch, watch, that shows, watch them card right there. Eight, nine, nine, ten. You never know where they're at. They are all just mixed up and give out everywhere, you see. Ten, all right, eleven, eleven. You have prayer card eleven, all right, over here, eleven. Twelve, prayer card twelve. They speak French, a brother speaks about Burnham. What? Huh? If I have met with you, you speak French, do you? 12, 13. Watch. It might be somebody deaf, you see. They can't hear. They're just sitting there holding a card. 13, 14. Prayer card. Um, 14. Look at some. Look at your neighbor. Maybe he's holding a card, sitting there deaf, you know. And he can't hear a thing. Then we, it backfires that way, 14. Now the prayer cards are inexchangeable. And they must be, the person must come, get their card and hold their card. Maybe somebody went out. Well, 15. Well, let, we'll stop. We'll go ahead. You got 15, go ahead. That's all right. Now let's wait right here just a minute, then see while you're getting ready. All right. Now please be real reverent and sit quiet just a moment. Now, all that I have said tonight, how many believe is a promise of the scripture? That's right now. Now, is it true? Is the next thing, see, is it true? Well, if it's true, then it's of God's word. 
then he's obligated to his word and he promised do you believe that now if he will make himself known by the same way that he made himself known to both jew and samaritan and said he would do it again in the last days to the gentile will you believe raise up your hand say i will believe it commission says i will believe it now there is now these people here i don't guess there's anybody here that knows me i thought i seen somebody here a while ago i knew but i think they are gone somebody everybody strange how many out there knows that i know nothing about you raise up your hands everywhere in the balconies wherever you are sure now look while they are getting them ready down there there's a little lady one time and let's say she didn't have a prayer card she had something better she had faith and she said i believe the man if i can just touch the body of his garment i'll be made well how many knows the scripture the woman with the blood all right now let's watch now just another scripture well till they tell me they're ready this woman didn't have no prayer card but she had faith she said she had no scripture for it but like you have got tonight but she didn't have no scripture but she said if i can touch his garment i believe the man i'll be healed and she sleeps with the crowd and touch his garment now did you ever see a palestinian garment it swings loose and it's also great underneath garment now if you touched my pocket or my coat i never feel it see all his garment hung out that far from him he never felt the physical touch so even he proved that he said who touched me and Peter said why lord in other words you will make people think you're mentally see don't say that see don't do that because everybody touched you he said but i perceive that i got weak virtue went from him that strength i got weak and he looked around through the audience and he found the woman told her about a blood issue and said her faith had made her whole how many knows the story is true now ministers brethren up here now the bible said that he is a high priest tonight that can be touched by the feeling of infirmities is that right how many out here believe that he is a high sitting at the right hand of god tonight as a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of infirmities then how would he act if he touched him he'd act the same way he did then if he's the same yesterday today and forever is that right so now you believe and you pray and you trust see what god does see if you can touch his garment you touch him say lord jesus i know that richard don't know me he knows nothing about me but you do so lord when i touch you you speak through him now what is this a gift is not something you take like a sickle or a knife and go through with that knife like a gift cutting that's not a gift of god a gift of god is just a gift of god is to knowing how to relax yourself get yourself out of the way so god can come in and use you it ain't something you've got in your hand that you can stab around with you just get yourself out of the way and let the holy spirit use you now isn't that the very way you people do when you speak with tongues you pentecostals just get yourself out of the way well that's the same thing here now and if he will grant it will you believe it and accept it know that his presence is here you won't need no prayer card then how about the judge of the heavens and earth as abraham called him judge of heaven and earth would you do wrong see if he in this last days according to his promise now through the week We'll just keep throwing scripture in there showing you that's the truth and if he's here with us tonight so plain that you can see his works and know he's here as his promised word now not some mythical something but what he's what promised he would be then you believe him now i don't know now sometimes if the visions come then i can't tell what i'm saying so let the microphone and whatever it is ever who's on it learn it up i want you to be real reverent just a moment now is this the lady now here it happens to be a woman just what i was talking about saint john 4 a woman and a man meet for the first time in life i'm a total stranger and we're total strangers to one another if that's right just so you raise up your hand let the people see <laughs> we have never met one another in life and there stands a woman here i 
and that's a perfect thing of our you are not the woman there and i'm not the lord but it's the people that meets here just a little place like they met first time in life now if he is the same yesterday today and forever he would perhaps talk to you a minute see like he did the woman see now the father the other day when you we sat to the borders here was we had 600 and something invitations in the states here besides overseas he said but in rouge louisiana there's a group of man down there i said go ahead that's all right set up the meeting down there i felt to do that here i am now i don't know what's next i'm just here that's all i know see now here you are a person i'm preaching the word saying that he is not dead he is alive he's alive and promised to identify himself in our flesh human flesh like he did back there see and that god was he poured into christ all christ was poured in the church that's him christ in us now if the lord jesus has been raised from the dead and i'd bring you up here and lay hands on you and maybe like some of our evangelist brethren <laughs> which is just exactly right and lay hands on you see your infirmity is gone the lord has healed you that wouldn't be all right you could go that's okay i certainly endorse that 100 percent that's what the bible said but now what if he stands here and tells you something that you have done or something that you ought not have done if he knows what you have been and tell you what you have been and you know whether it's true or not then if he tells you what your future is going to be if that's right this is going to be right too is that right that makes it him you see now i'm just saying that to contact your spirit see just like he did the woman at the well bring me a drink now there's one thing i want you to notice now watch the woman watch the expression change on her face just now see she's conscious that something is going on how many ever seen the picture of that light see it's right on the woman now see 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 it's right sit there it's kind of an amber light moving now her trouble is this now if i could heal you i would do it but i can't i can't heal you god is a healer your faith in god you're extremely nervous you're suffering with a nervous condition and then you got something wrong with your throat you could hardly talk <laughs> just above a whisper it's a thyroid gland that's right now what do you believe now just be a moment just so that they wouldn't think i was guessing it just a minute see i i see it so that people wouldn't think you're a nice person and i got a good contact with the holy spirit with you see so now yes you've been advised to be operated on but you've turned it down that's exactly right you're expecting god yes sir another thing you have an asthmatic condition that bothers you that's true isn't it now you see something here knows you is not right do you believe it's him then believe it and go off the platform and get well and believe with all your heart amen do you believe now with all of your heart if thou canst believe how do you do sir i'm a stranger to you i suppose if we the brother says i met you once before at baton rouge you met me when i was here before at baton rouge my that's been quite a while ago hasn't it i guess it's been 12 years or more maybe longer and maybe 14 years well i wouldn't know what nothing about you no more than you was in the meeting or something but god does know you and it's a light i have to watch it see where it goes you see to other people that it's anointing like the lord jesus will here we are I believe the last person was a woman now it's just like a dream you see you dreamed something now you're a man and now when jesus met a man simon peter when he identified himself his name was simon then he called him peter said his name would be after that be called peter if the lord jesus will tell me what your trouble is will you believe me to be servant and believe that he is present Will every man in here believe the same thing? <laughs> Perhaps you are known here because you are from the city. I see something like you are excited about something. That's yes, it is because it's a blood. Something's wrong with blood. You're bleeding in the bowels. 
that's exactly right that adds to it in there too see now that's true isn't it the brother says amen now you believe that's the way our lord would have done it wouldn't he that's him doing it don't you believe it the brother says amen what if jesus told simon what his name was what if god will tell me what your name is will you believe me amen all right Louis Carey, amen, that's exactly right, go on your road, amen, have faith in God, do you believe he's the same as today and forever, now I'm a stranger to you, sister, I don't know you, I've never seen you in my life, you're just a woman standing here, younger than me, born miles apart and years apart, but he's the same as today and forever, do you believe that, the sister says yes, do you believe that, now, you know, standing by the side of a man, your brother here wouldn't make you feel like that. You know there has got to be something else in that presence. Real sweet, humble, meek, isn't that right? If that's right, so the audience will know. Just raise up your hand so they can see. I'm looking right at her, that light circling right around her. The lady is standing here for somebody else. She isn't here for herself, it's for her daughter. That's right, you believe the Lord can tell me what's you're planning on bringing that girl to the meeting, but you believe God can tell me her matter? Will you believe and put that handkerchief on her and believe that she'll get healed? It's in her back. That's right. That's exactly. Go believe now. Put that on her. She'll get well. All right? Just believe it. Now, do you believe with all your heart? If thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. How do you do? We are strangers to each other, I suppose. I don't know you. You don't know me. But the Lord knows both of us. So being man and woman meeting for the first time, now our Lord said that one time to that woman, and the whole city believed. He, they didn't. He didn't do it no more. He just did it one time, and all the city believed. Now don't be afraid. There's nothing going to bother you. It's going to help you, see? Because I don't think you're a critic or... That vibration of what the Spirit of the Lord wouldn't be coming in like that. You're a believer. So you have no reason to be alarmed about anything. You're suffering from a rupture. That is exactly right. And do you believe that the Lord Jesus will heal you of that? What if I tell you something else was wrong with you? Will it make you be strong to believe? You got a not. If I can tell you it's not on your cheek, it's on your back. Is that right to wave? All right. Now believe. Go. Believe right and be made well. Do you believe now, every one of you, with all your heart? Now that ought to make everybody realize in the presence of God, all right? Sir, do you believe God can heal the arthritis and make you well? The brother says, yes, if you do, just keep walking, saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now come this way, lady. I see you trying to get up out of a bed too, real slow, arthritis also. If you believe with all your heart, God will make you well. Do you believe it? All right, just keep walking, saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. I certainly believe it with all of my heart. All right. Cancer, a condition of nervousness and stuff and prostate and arthritis also. And lay that upon her. Believe with all your heart. to Get well also. Now just keep on walking, believing God, and it will be all right. If you just can believe it, all right? Come this way, lady. Do you believe me to be a servant? You do? Do you believe God can heal that heart trouble you got? The sister says, yes. Well, just keep walking, saying, thank you, Lord. I thank you for healing me of my heart trouble, all right? Come, sir, do you believe what you see to be the truth? What if I told you that some of trouble was healed down there and you got to eat your supper? Would you believe it? All right, go on. Eat your supper. You're going to be all right. You must. You're shadowed cancer. Do you believe that God will make you well and heal you? All right. Just keep walking, saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe with all my heart. Also, another's heart. <laughs> Do you believe God will heal it and make you well? Just keep on walking, saying, thank you, Lord Jesus, and believe with all your heart. Come this way, lady. Look on here. Your main thing, you've got several things wrong with you. A lady's trouble, but your main thing is the heart trouble that's bothering you real bad. Do you believe God will heal it and make you well? Just keep on walking, saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe with all my heart. All right. Come, sir. Got two or three things wrong with you, complications. But your main thing you want me to pray for or ask about is the arthritis you have. Look at the arthritis. Just keep moving, believing with all 
you'll never have to take that stick amen believe it though your heart you got stomach trouble it's caused had you for a long time it's a nervous condition making an utter acidic stomach you drink anything that's kind of a coffee or something it gets sour in your mouth and things like that go believe now and it, it won't bother you no more just christ will make you well come lady do you believe that just christ just a minute just a minute do you believe god heals that sinus sitting there and make you well from the sinus do you believe it with all of your heart the ladies there with a checkered looking dress on do you believe that god will heal you and make you well of it you had more faith than you thought you had it's all right it's over now you believe what do you think do you believe that god will heal you and make you well of that nervous condition sitting there and that man the brother says yes sir you do you believe it now who did you touch he never touched me you touched him that's what did it amen you fell over in your lap and you was having eye trouble your eyes are getting so bad you can't hardly get around do you believe that god will make you well believe it and you can have it amen i challenge you to believe it stomach trouble stomach trouble has just left you do you believe it now go on your road and rejoice and say thank you lord be made well this little lady sitting right here with a green looking dress on you're trying to touch something you're praying do you believe god can tell me what you're tra praying about get rid of that god with a trouble and you think it'd be all right the lady kind of heavy set there the dress on big do you believe that god will heal you of that garbage of trouble if you could believe god will grant it to you but you can go and be made well amen you have to believe it you can only do it as you believe how many of you want to believe with all of your heart now sirs we would see jesus he is raised from the dead he's alive today he's here in his church showing that his great com his coming is drawing nigh. the world is going to be burned like it was in the days of Sodom, the Ottomans has already gathered together in loads of things to set her on fire. And that, but before that happens, the promised son will arrive in person, Jesus Christ, to take home his church. Do you believe that with all of your heart? Do you believe that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever? How many believes now that this, his presence is here, and you believe that he made this statement, this sign shall follow them that believe if they lay hands on the sick they shall recover raise up your hands now lay your hands on one another where the sick people is lay your hands yeah i'm rich i'm afraid they'll make me close lay put your hands now you pray for each other don't pray for yourself pray for the one you got your hands on now he is here to heal each one of you believe it heavenly father we believe now with all of our heart that in the presence of jesus christ the son of god the devil has lost his power, his influence, and Jesus Christ lives now. Come out, Satan. May these people be made well for the kingdom of God's sake.